In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. And the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight, you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus. That you should put away the old self of your former life corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. Glory Glory to Lord. Lord. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal, so they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. to bring our reflection today in form of a question. Do you seek the bread 
given by the Father or do you seek the Father who gives you the bread? This weekend's readings uh, remind me of my first experience as a newly ordained priest uh, and a parish priest in one of the parishes uh, back there in Kenya, which a place which Father Mike has been. So I was pastor of this parish, which was quite, quite vast geographically. It was covering a huge territory. Actually, I had 27 churches to, uh, to take care of. So the main one, and then we had uh, the small ones, 27 of them. And the farthest one was a, a drive of three hours. So most of, the, most of the time I would celebrate Sunday Mass during the week because there was no way I could be in all the places on a Sunday. Now the place is so dry and that, that year there was no drop of rain the, whole, the entire year. So it was so dry, the animals were dying and people did not have uh, something to eat. So uh, going, uh, going for Mass, I could see that people are really struggling there. So I decided uh, to, uh, to do a campaign or to do some appeal for some food, which was basically uh, corn and beans, very basic. So this was a form of encouragement. So whenever I went for Mass, uh, those uh, distant stations, I would carry with me maybe uh, two bags of, co uh, of corn and a bag of beans. Then after the mass, the people uh, would kind of divide among themselves and have something uh, for dinner that day and for maybe a few days. But now, uh, the, the, I tried my best uh, to provide for them that way. But I could not satisfy their need all the time. The need was, was enormous. So it came to a point that now, whenever I went for mass, uh, the first thing they will do is to look uh, in the truck. <laughs> so they'll look at the, at the back of the truck, just a single cab. They'll look and see if there's something then they, they, they remain. <laughs> then if that day I, I, I didn't carry anything, I could see them walk away sadly. So I said to them, you know, don't seek the bread. Just, don't just go for the bread alone, but go for the Father who gives the bread. The Lord in the Eucharist is the one who, who provides for uh, what you have been able to get. So don't remain at that level or beyond. Now, in 1943, Abraham Maslow uh, published an essay, an essay entitled A Theory of Human Motivation, in which he introduced for the first time his hierarchy of human needs. And he chose the shape of a pyramid to emphasize that the strongest of the needs and the basis of all the rest are the physiological needs. So if you research about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you will see that pyramid. And at the, at the bottom there is the physiological needs. Then as you move up the scale, you'll see a sec safety and security. Then when that is taken care of, then comes love and belonging. And wh when that is taken care of, then you have self-esteem. Then when that is taken care of, then up at the peak, you'll have self-actualization and transcendence. So you cannot be at the self-actualization when the basic needs are not taken care of. Now, as a psychologist, he understood that the most important human need 
is associated with how we feel physically. If our physiological needs are not addressed, we will not be able to seek the subsequent levels he identifies as important to us. So I would like us to use that, that theory of Maslow to understand what is going on today in our readings. So using that theory, it is not hard for us to understand that when the Israelites found themselves in the middle of the desert and without food, they did not worry uh, much about their covenant with God. In fact, they were downright grumpy and rebellious. And they said, would, uh, would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh parts and ate our fill of bread? So their hunger led them to forget that they had been slaves in Egypt, where their lack of freedom had not allowed them to worship their God instead of Pharaoh. Their lives had not been perfect, but at least they had food in their stomachs. So that hunger is a monumental problem when it presents itself, which is why Jesus uses that image to teach his followers about what God has sent him to preach and practice. So hunger for heavenly food is as real to human being as is the physical or the physiological earthly hunger. So as Christians, we seek the highest level of needs, transcendence. We know that this earthly life is not what we live for. It is the eternal life that is our ultimate goal. But unfortunately, the business and relentless pace of this life sometimes distract us from our desire for the bread of life, which is Jesus himself. Our attention to that higher need for transcendence is clouded over by other needs that come before it. Now Jesus tells the people who had made so much effort to get into the boats and across to Capernaum, I tell you most solemnly, you are not looking for me because you have seen the signs, but because you had all the bread you wanted to eat. That's a very strong statement there. And it may sound blunt and insensitive or impolite. But it is also an invitation to all of us to do some soul searching. Why am I a Christian? Why do I come to church? Why do I seek God? Why do I pray? Is it a, a mere convenience? Is it just out of habit and tradition? Or is it simply that God may solve my problems? Jesus says that he is the true bread from heaven that is going to give life to the world. That is going to usher in the, the age of salvation that is going to fulfill the expectations of the Jews. That one day, the bread from heaven would come back and that it would be the Messiah who would bring it. So, uh, those Jews asked, they, they told Jesus, give us this bread always. They, they had manna for 40 years. Now, they are saying, give us this bread always. Then Jesus says, that bread is me. I am the bread of life. So in that case, he's telling them that 
I'm not going to, I'm not only uh, going to bring the manna. I am the true manna from heaven. I am the bread of God that gives life to the world. And it quenches your hunger and thirst. Now, when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, when we receive this bread of life, then we have life. And the life of God changes us. When, once we receive this bread of life, Jesus, you cannot remain the same. So we'll, have, we'll do what St. Paul is telling us in the second reading. We love, we serve, we forgive as God does. So the Eucharist continues the transformation we received at baptism. Put aside the old self and put on the new self, created in God's image and likeness. So the Eucharist deepens us in the life of Christ living in us. So I would like to say that it is not the act of receiving communion that makes us pleasing to God. But it is, le it is letting that communion truly transform us so that at every hour, every moment, we are obedient to the God we receive. So being in communion, receiving the bread of life, Jesus himself, that will help us to think, to decide, to forgive, to love, and to serve as the Lord wants us to. So today, let us say yes to that transformation so that as Paul told, uh, told us in the letter to the Ephesians, we will put on that new man <coughs> created in God's image and bring to the whole world that bread of life. So may we be transformed by the bread of life, Jesus himself, that we may go out and also bring that transformation or bring that bread of life, Jesus, to others in the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.